Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here. Today we are looking at the amazing Give Me Liberty, an American Dream series from Frank Miller and Dave Gibbons, published by Dark Horse Comics in 1990. Such a great four issue prestige format series. Can't wait to show it to you. So make sure you subscribe to my channel, hit like. I'm going to cue the intro and I'll be right back. It's Troy TV. All right, guys, so I love this book. This is so cool. I haven't busted this out in forever. It feels like it's kind of underrated just because, uh, I mean, it got plenty of accolades and kudos at the time, but I don't really see people mention it a lot. And it's got such a great uh, creative team with co-creators Frank Miller and Dave Gibbons. Um, so this is amazing. Dark Horse Comics. Uh, Martha Washington is the star of the book. She's like uh, from the projects Cabrini Green in Chicago. And we start with her birth and take it from there. Um, beautiful art from Dave Gibbons. Um, let's see. It is colored by Robin Smith. Writer Frank Miller, artist Dave Gibbons, colorist Robin Smith. I think Dave Gibbons works completely digitally now. Um, I think this is still him working traditionally. He always penciled and inked and lettered his own work. So he's definitely um, one of those very well-rounded cartoonists. And it looks like he's painted the covers. So um, just like a great artist all around. Obviously, um, you know, uh, the co-creator and uh, uber-talented artist of Watchmen and Frank Miller. I, this might have been around Sin City time, I guess, since they're at Dark Horse. Um, this isn't under the Legend imprint, so this is before Legend. But, oh my God, what an amazing... This story tells the story of this little girl, uh, Martha Washington, who grows up in the projects. And she basically becomes like a, a, a soldier. And it is such a great story and such beautiful art. I mean, Dave Gibbons is definitely one of those just, I don't know. He just draws such, like, such perfect comic book storytelling and just like the multiple panels, the nine panel grid. I mean, he's just a master of the craft. It's funny because he doesn't, I, I hate to say, like, he, he doesn't have, like, one of the more, like, beautifully, aesthetically pleasing art styles, if that makes sense. I'm sort of getting, like, Gil Kane vibes from him a little bit, which is appropriate because uh, uh, some of uh, Dave Gibbons' first work for American comic books was Green Lantern, and Gil Kane is, like, one of the preeminent uh, Green Lantern artist, so perhaps he was emulating his style a little bit, but not 100% sure. But I really just do love his uh, style. This is a dense story. Like, there is so much to it. Martha Washington's such a great, like, iconic character. Um, this was written before... Frank Miller lost it. <laughs> I love it. I mean, this is like so, uh, you know, Dave Gibbons just like puts so much into it, like with these little like backup features that are painted and, you know, um, clips from books or newspapers or whatever. And just, I mean, the amount of detail and work that went into it. And this is like, you know, after doing Watchmen, like, you know, five years later, like crazy. I mean, you would think that if you had something like Watchmen under your belt, like you shot your wad, that's it, forget about it. But Dave Gibbons went on to do like a lot of stuff with this Marshall Washington character with Frank Miller. And then also his um, great graphic novel, The Originals, which he wrote as well, I believe. 
And this art is just amazing. It's funny because he, like I said, he's just so well-rounded and such a great storyteller. You know, there's so much action and just uh, detail and just um, really brings you into the story. And it's just so well done and so well drawn. But then, like, he captures emotion so well and just, I don't know. He's, he's a great artist to remind people why it's so important to be able to draw everything when you're a comic book artist because you literally have to know how to draw everything from a hot dog to a banana to a grocery store to you know outer space to press conferences to perspective and fires and hospitals I mean it's one thing to just draw you know heroic looking characters but it's another thing to draw them well and to draw them in realistic, believable settings that, you know, bring the reader in. And I love this for so many reasons. Fat Boy, obvious rift on Big Boy. I'm from the Midwest. I totally grew up with Big Boy restaurants. It was always so much fun when our parents took us there for Saturday lunch or something exciting like that. And we got our Big Boy comic books. And I still love Big Boy to this day. So that is so cool. That's reminding me of the big robot in Squid Game. I mean, I highly doubt that. I also noticed in the last uh, issue, like all the green, like there's a lot of green in this book. Very kind of matrixy. But it all ties in very well. I love it. How like we go from this like weird green forest to... The Statue of Liberty, who is green because the copper oxidized. Um, I would love to see like a full color picture of the Statue of Liberty in her original glory. I'm sure if I Google one, do they exist? Do they, do they have color pictures then? Oh my God, I'm sounding so stupid right now. What a great shot this is. I love that this is only 2011 too, because I think it's supposed to be like fairly futuristic but you know this is 20 years into the future and then we've got like space nazis why do nazis always have to show up in comic books i mean i know they don't they make the best villains or whatever but i don't know they always seem just so icky to me i just never like nazis in comic books that much even though that does look, look pretty freaking cool This story is so epic and sweeping and like totally all over the place. This is begging for like a Netflix series or a movie adaption. I wonder why that's never happened. I mean, especially it's like, you know, we're, we're, we're begging for diversity and inclusion and stuff. It's like, well, where's Martha Washington when you need her? I mean, look, this story has uh, an African-American female protagonist. So who wouldn't want to play her? I'm sure there's plenty of actresses uh, that would be uh, perfect for this role out there. And then you've got like Native American supporting cast and just like all kinds of good, good stuff going on in here. So, and a great story, which is the most important thing, don't you guys think? I think that a great story would have I mean, a great story isn't because of the inclusion in diversity, but most great stories have inclusion in diversity, if that makes any sense, or they should anyway. Just organically and cohesive, because we live in an, a very big melting pot on this planet. Very creepy. Love that. Dave Gibbons, and he's still going strong. I mean, after all these years, this is from 30 years ago, guys. Pretty amazing, huh? This has aged very well. It looks beautiful. This art is just stunning. I love it. Oops. Little bit of uh, nip slip there for you. Sorry, kids. Didn't see that coming. I'm sure no one under 18 is watching this anyway. And if you've never seen an abo a boob in your life before, Lord help you. Wow, that is so cool. 
love that. See, once again, this is why you have to draw everything. I mean, could you imagine the script calling for like this big redwood tree with these buildings in the background and little people standing by it and blah, blah, blah. You just never know. And that's the great thing about comic books too. Is, uh, they just take you on such a journey. <laughs> That is really cool. There's some super, super, oh, that's very uh, clockwork orange happening to poor Martha Washington there. She really did <laughs> uh, have quite the amazing journey of her life. And there's a few more series after this. Martha Washington goes to war, I think, or something. I don't know. Martha Washington's birthday. And then, sadly, the death of Martha Washington. So it's like they really do cover her um, from birth to death throughout. Um, that was book three. Book four, Death and Taxes. They do cover her whole life, her whole journey. Not within this series, but over a series of series. So it really would make an excellent, like... Netflix or Hulu or Amazon Prime or whoever the hell else. I mean, there's so many uh, streaming services now that how is this not part of it? Is it coming? Is it in development? Is it in development hell? What's happening? I need I need the female Wesley Snipes here. That reminds me of when Wesley Snipes dyed his hair blonde. It's just such cool art. I just love it so much. I mean, Frank Miller and Dave Gibbons. Does it get much better than that? But I said that when I could just cover Jim Starlin and Bernie Wrightson too. So I'm just in love with all comics. What can I tell you? Oh, I love that. She's carrying around a little brain. It's like Monsieur Mala in the brain. I love it. That's why I love it. Like, this is such a, like, a different kind of comic book, but you still have this sort of typical trapping of comic book carrying around, like, a a living brain. It's <laughs> very sci-fi as well. So cool. I just remember loving the series so much and, like, just being so excited about it and just, like, take my money, take my money. I just love comic books, obviously. Very cool. Have you guys ever even heard of this? I mean, imagine Frank Miller and uh, Dave Gibbons working together and how totally, totally cool and like rare and amazing. And not only once, but like three or four different series or at least one shots and specials. At least three times they work together on this character, I think. And I'm happy to bring you more when I come across them. Uh, poor Black Panther. I hate cruelty to animals. I mean, he is attacking him, but whatever, he's a hunter. I don't know. Very cool. Giving me kind of Watchmen vibes here. He does such great. I love, see, this is so cool. And this is like such a testament to uh, um, comic book art. And especially like a writer who draws working with another artist. Like he's not going to muddy this up with any stupid captions of them saying like quips to each other as they're you know basically trying to kill each other so and just such great fight choreography from dave gibbons like totally cool it just flows so nicely across the page and i love dave gibbons always use seems to use like very traditional comic book um panel layouts but he shows his work definitely demonstrates why they work and why they exist and why like, especially, like, a seemingly boring six-page panel page like this is so completely effective because it's controlling your eye, the, the speed at which you look at the panels, and I just think it's pretty freaking amazing. And there you have it, people. That is <laughs> what a great panel to end on. <laughs> anyway, and a beautiful painting by Dave Gibbons. I mean, there's just so much goodness to this series. Frank Miller, Dave Gibbons, Give Me Liberty, 
Dark Horse, 1990, Martha Washington, one of the greatest female protagonists or any protagonist of any story anywhere. Totally worth checking out. If you guys have not read this, you need to get it uh, right now because it is so good. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, hit like, share my content, and I'll bring you some more later. All right, thanks guys.